Before I started building this bandsaw, I ordered some bandsaw blades, specifically this one and this one, and both of those blades chatter quite a lot. With this blade, uh, the stock positively bounces when it hits, whereas this one is just more of a chatter. But this blade that just arrived in the mail, this one cuts much smoother, even though it looks not that different from the other blades. These cuts were made with this blade and this cut with this new blade. These are both 3 TPI blades and about the same tooth shape. But the worst one is this one. Let's put that one in. Compared to these two, this one is just a disaster. So I'm going to try to capture what's happening here at 600 frames per second from this old camera but at really low resolution. It looks like the blade periodically just lunges forward into the wood and that's because it has a rather uh, sharp hook tooth shape to it. Looking at a high res photo of these three blades, this one which has the most chatter has the most hook to it and this one the least and this one somewhere in between. And that hook can really help pull the uh, blade into the wood faster which is why it jumps so much. Every time it does that bang, it jumps forward in the wood. But that hook tooth shape isn't all bad because for softer woods it can be helpful because it makes the blade cut a little bit easier with less power and less thrust against it, which can be very useful for resawing. And for instance, when Rachel was trying to use that blade to cut up some walnut, in the sapwood, it didn't do the banging. Oh, it's only in the heartwood, which is a bit harder, that she encountered that banging. But I wonder if there's more at play because this blade that gives me all this trouble has got a lot more set to it. So I just verified that all of these blades have a 32 thou thickness to them. Let's check the set. So here's my low tech height gauge setup. And I'm just going to measure the tip of the tooth facing up on the table saw. So that should be the thickness of the blade plus the set in either direction because the other teeth will hold that blade up. And I'm getting about 64 thou on that tooth. Let's try another tooth. 64, 64, pretty consistent. And let's just check, zero is still good. And the back of the blade is, reads 33 thou above the table here. And now the 3 16th inch blade, the set on that one is getting uh, 52 thou. 53, uh, and only 50 on this one. Oh no, 52. And finally that troublesome blade, 61, 63, 62. I think that slight inconsistency has more to do with the teeth being harder to hit because they're smaller. But at any rate, uh, the plates that shatter more have got about 10 thou more set to them than the 3 16 inch blade that works much better. Since that quarter inch blade is hardly usable to me the way it works right now, I'm wondering, can I reduce the set of that blade just slightly? All right, here's my barbaric blade set reduction setup. Let's see if it works. I'm overlapping my presses because the vice jaws have a texture to them, so they might sometimes miss some of the teeth. Well, I think that made a difference, but uh, maybe five or six thou, that's it. I'll try something even more barbaric. I put the blade in backwards by flipping it inside out, and I'll try to grind away at the tips of the set of that teeth with a grinding stone. Hey, look. I can touch the running blade because it's backwards. And maybe you're wondering, how do you flip the blade inside out? Well, this way.
Well, that made no measurable difference, so I think I need to be a bit more aggressive about the grinding. You can see the ground part on the tips of the teeth actually shining a little bit. Okay, the uh, set on this blade now is a little bit less than the blade that's working really well for me. Well, it's still chattering, but the uh, cut is much cleaner than it was before. Even in the sapwood, where I wasn't getting the sort of chattering, the cut has improved quite a lot. The cut radius has of course gotten worse, so this is as tight as I can cut now, whereas before I was able to cut a fair bit tighter. And if I cut slow enough that it doesn't chatter, that cut actually has a bit of a shine to it now. And cutting fast, again, much improved over what it was before. And a shine to it too. The reason I like to grind the corners off the set of the blades is, with a corner cutting like that, it kind of makes a jagged cut in the wood like that. But uh, if I grind that flat on both sides, then that makes these cuts flat too. So that should make a smoother cut. And the reason I was suspicious of the set making the chatter worse is for the part where the tooth is set like that, of course, it's effectively half the TPI than it is normally. So we're going from 4 TPI to only every other tooth or 2 TPI being set in this direction. So the further they're spread, effectively, it reduces the TPI. I was cutting here, leaving the pencil line intact, but only the pencil line, nothing else. The way that works is actually not entirely making a freehand cut, because I'm always pushing to the side a little bit, so that the back of the blade rides against one side of my cut, and that way I can just kind of steer the cut through the wood, whereas if I was cutting straight like this, any sort of wiggle in my hands would result in waviness in the cut. I also bought this blade, which is a 6 TPI quarter inch blade, and this one cuts super smooth. So the 6 TPI blade cuts really smooth, and it doesn't whine, and it doesn't chatter. The only problem is with uh, 6 TPI, it doesn't cut very deep very effectively. And also, when I'll need to resharpen it, that'll be a lot more work, because that's a thousand teeth. And high TPI blades need to be a lot sharper than low TPI blades to do the same kind of cutting. But uh, being able to make really clean cuts is very useful when I use my bandsaw as a uh, pretend CNC machine. And I was thinking recently, well, if I had a CNC machine, I could just run out the parts for another one of these sanders and just build another one. But then I realized that's kind of stupid, because bandsawing out the parts for that sander only took half an hour, which is probably less time than it would take on a real CNC if you factor setup time in. And it's also only a small fraction of the time that it took to actually build that sander. Anyways, I might stone the sides of these blades as well at some point, because that sort of technique, this is far from the first time that I've done that.